Hi, I'm Cameron, and I don't just read comics, I love them. On today's episode of Cameron Reads Comics, I'm giving my friend Jacob his very first comic. We are going to be reading Lock and Key by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. More specifically, Lock and Key Volume 1, Welcome to Lovecraft. This volume covers issues 1 through 6 of the IDW series. Just a warning, we are going to get into full and complete spoilers for Volume 1 of Lock and Key. Also, a really important note that the building that we were in as we were as we were recording this was undergoing some construction on the roof, so you are going to hear some construction in the back. But it's not overwhelming, and you can totally hear Jacob and I talking about this book. Remember to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Cameron Reads Comics, and make sure to clobber the like and subscribe buttons as well as leave me a five star rating and review on iTunes. Following their father's gruesome murder in a violent home invasion, the Lock children return to his childhood home of Key House in secluded Lovecraft, Massachusetts. Their mother Nina is too trapped in her grief and a wine bottle to notice that all in Key House is not what it seems. Too many locked doors, too many unanswered questions. Older kids Tyler and Kinsey aren't much better, but not youngest son Bodie who quickly finds a new friend living in an empty well, and a new toy, a key, that offers hours of spirited entertainment. But again, all at Key House is not what it seems, and not all doors are meant to be opened. Soon, horrors old and new, real and imagined, will come ravening after the locks and the secrets their family holds. Welcome, Jacob, to Cameron Reads Comics. So glad to have you on the show. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm excited to be on this show. We are so glad. Jacob has been someone who has been destined to be on the podcast for a long time. We talk about it a lot, and we are glad we're finally making this happen. Um, so, I guess, Jacob, going into the first... Before we even talk about the comic that we read, which was Lock and Key, and it's so good, um, what has been your... Uh, like, have you ever been involved in any type of fandom before? And, and that doesn't need to be subject to comic stuff, but, like, any sort of fandom. Okay, going back to being, to when I was really young. When I was a toddler, I got just obsessed with Star Wars. And, yeah, throughout elementary school, I was obsessed with Star Wars. I would watch those movies religiously and play with those action figures nonstop and, you, like, throw them off the balcony. And Yeah, do you have a favorite Star Wars? Uh... Yeah, Empire Strikes Back was always my favorite. Oh my god! I just gosh. watched that over and over. Oh, we got a big Empire fan. That's good. But then, yeah, and then, and then like fifth, fourth or fifth grade, I got obsessed with Twilight. <laughs> wow! Not <laughs> fourth grade to seventh grade, I was the Twilight guy in school. I <laughs> girls liked you because you were sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> I was lugging those heavy books in my backpack out all, all day. You're like, mom, they don't understand. <laughs> Bella and Jacob have a love like no other. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Are you Team Edward or Jacob then? Team Edward. Okay, good. We're on a camera reads comics as an entity is also Team Edward, okay? Because Edward's Batman now. That's <laughs> that's how that True. works. <laughs> um, In full circle. So then going into this, have you had you ever had you have ever what am I oh my gosh. I'm stumbling. <laughs> have you ever read a comic before this? Mm mm. None? Uh, none. Not even like a like a like a like a grocery store special? Just never. I mean maybe like a little like newspaper one my grandma in the bathroom used to have these books that were just filled with those little it's yeah. like four panel newspaper comics oh those are the best yeah but yeah i mean i really have it not even the one that i own i've never even read that one which one do you own that one that you gave me the uh oh my i didn't give you one you know what the one he owns is oh this is a great i forgot all about this <laughs> This is a great story. Jacob, okay, so we work together. Jacob comes up to me and he says, oh, hey, I have this, like, really old comic that's, like, kind of cool. And I said, oh, do you know what it, what it is? And he's like, oh, 
It's from 1952 or something. It's called Tales of Suspense. And I'm like, oh, like, let's go check it out. And then he brings it. And I'm like, oh, I can tell you how much this is worth because I don't. It's, what is it? It's Tales of Suspense. I think it's number 52. Yeah, I think number that's, 52. That's what we found out. And then we look it up. And then I find out. I'm like, Jacob, this is the first appearance of Black Widow. <laughs> I'm like, this issue. And it's like for my fans that like collect it wasn't bagged or boarded. It was like it was like it was it, 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 the book was ravaged on its own, just like over time. You know what I mean? And but you hadn't done anything like I don't know to re- like destroy it. It was just no, it's just yeah, old. It was just it just been sitting sitting in a drawer. Yeah, and so we find out that Jacob owned the first copy, uh, first first appearance of Black Widow. So then I gave him like a my light and like a. I gave him the the tools to take care of what he had. Yeah, it, it's on the wall now. It's in it's, it's in a proper place. Yes, it's perfect now. So, um, anyways, yeah. So he's apparently saying he hasn't even read that. And my recommendation <laughs> would be don't read that. Go find another <laughs> copy online. I'm gonna leave that one on the wall. Exactly. Um, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that. That's <laughs> so funny. Um, okay, so then I guess going into lock and key. Wait, I'm sorry. I have one more thing to say before that. Want to know why I chose this for you? Do you know why? No. It's because in October, Jacob and his sweet girlfriend, Mary, were watching a, a horror movie a day. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. going through all that. So we I was, were. So I was like, well, you know, it seems like this guy likes horror comics. Or like, or he likes horror. That's yeah. For a comic that really, it's not, this is the first horror comic I ever read because I'm just scared easily. Like, I'm a fragile little butterfly and so like reading uh like hearing about joe hill and hearing about this series in particular it had a lot of hype around it there's going to be a show coming out so i was like i'll go pick up the first volume it sounds cool and then um reading it it was super good and so i was like okay if i was to ever do this on a podcast someone who's never read a comic and who likes horror it was kind of a no-brainer for me so yeah i loved it and i didn't know that Comics can get that dark. It was there were some dark things in there. Yeah, yeah. So overall, how did you like it? I loved it. It was awesome. I got sucked in. I wrote it. I read it pretty quick. Like it was. Yeah, yeah. It's a good. It's a good story. And just like and actually, the first thing I noticed when I opened it was I had a question. Mm-hmm. The there's separate credits for the colors and the art. Yes. So the artist does all this without color and then a colorist comes in and yes. does all the coloring that's exactly how it works um so it, I, I break it up there's there's like teams and so as you look at the credits for this we can also just go over it so the story it says it's written by joe hill so joe hill submits a script to the artist you know and, and the script is a breakdown of like uh page one panel one you know page one panel two right. up until on page two um and obviously until the end of the issue, they'll, they'll get about 22 pages or so. And um, then it go, he gives the he gives the script to uh, Gabriel Rodriguez, who did the art on this book. It's subject to the creators and the teams. But for the most part, Gabriel Rodriguez probably does the pencils and the inks. So he'll sketch out everything in pencil okay. and then he'll go over them in black ink. And they will submit those pages to a colorist. And then a colorist will digitally color the entire book. And so sometimes it's all, you know, sometimes you have books that are completely colored and uh, drawn by the same person. Sometimes you'll get a creator that does all of it. He'll write, draw, color, and it just, you know, it's part of their process. And so it's kind of neat. But then, yeah, you have an editor who goes over everything too. It's, there's a lot of people that make comics happen and it's even to the point too, there's letterers who do the booms and the pows and stuff on the page. And, really kind of make action happen and so yeah that's it's that's that's what that is <laughs> yeah that, i just thought that was interesting right when i opened it i was just like oh there's a lot of people credited on this thing yeah man and you know yeah i it's it's super cool it's it's especially to like jesse and other people who i recommend books to are like how do you remember all these names and it's like <laughs> oh if i recognize like the color palette of a book that i really like you know i really like the book and then i see the color palette i'm like Oh wow, that's beautiful. And then I then I'm like, oh, I wonder who did that. Like, I want to know. And then I find out that this person, so and so, has been on this book. And oh, this color palette's so beautiful. I'm like, I just love it. So for this book in particular, uh, I I don't know who did the colors. I should have looked that up. J Photos. J Photos. Thank you for your colors. We love them. Yeah, we do. It was great. 
Okay, and then um, just getting into the book, uh, how you see, so you said you really liked the story? Yeah, it was awesome. Who, do, who was your favorite character, do you think? I think Bode was my favorite character. I love him. He just, the way he's just, his, his dialogue, the way he's just explaining about being a ghost and just all the, the way he goes about everything. The little comic he and drew. Just, and, just, and yeah, the comic he drew for school was, I think, maybe one of my favorite pages in the book. Like that, I just, I loved that. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and correct you. His name is Bodie. Bodie. Okay. But you're good. No worries. We called him Bode the whole time. <laughs> well, you were reading it, so it's good. He, um, and I guess when I was hearing about this story in particular, too, Bodie is intentionally named Bodie because when he like, becomes a ghost, he leaves his body. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I learned that, and I was like, that was a oh. a connection I missed. That's a connection I missed until it was explained to me, so you're good. Um, Bodhi, I think... I wouldn't, I, he's, I wouldn't he, have thought that. He's also my favorite freaking character, too. Because uh, he is, like... One of the best things that Joe Hill does in this story is he gets this little kid... Or he... Or I'm sorry... Every character in the story, I think, is so specific and, like, so well done. And, like, all of their narratives are very, like, their dialogue is subject to that character. Like, and and, and he crafts them so mindfully that, you know, the way he read Sam Lesser and his verbiage is completely different than Bodhi's verbiage. Yeah, and, and like, it's clear when it switches to another person's dialogue because it's just... Like what you were saying, it fits to that character really well. Yeah, and, like, that's why I think we love Bodhi because he's so charming. I'm like, oh my gosh, he what was your favorite thing that he did, do you think? I thought it was really funny when he was trying to get his siblings to come join him and they just thought he was being annoying and just come play, but they didn't realize he was he was serious. Yeah. And I thought it was pretty funny when uh what's the older brother's name? Tyler. I thought when Tyler kind of just just wrote him off and was like, eh, I don't want to play with you, you know, go go do your thing. I thought it was hilarious when he said uh he told him have fun having cold showers yeah. for the rest of your life because the night before he had been in the shower making him cold. Yeah, and I'm like, that could have been weird, but it, it worked out. It wasn't, though. Yeah, no, It really the, wasn't. It was because it was Bodhi being innocent, you know? And yeah, just an innocent little kid. He's yeah. just like, yeah, like, and I loved, in the writing, one of the themes that kept, like, popping up was the whole thing with the knock-knock jokes. Oh, yeah. Where Bodhi would be like, okay, um, knock-knock, who's there, who... He's like, what's that one knock knock joke you told me? And it's hilarious. And nobody else thought it was funny. And it was the owl. And he's tried to say yeah, it to and, Echo. Yeah, and he was trying to understand it. And then, they, and then, and then someone told him that another way the joke is worded is oh, yeah, instead yeah. of saying, "What are you an owl? What are you? What are you, my Echo?" Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, eh, well, obviously, very funny moving into like the character like Echo. Um, actually, how did you feel before we get into the villains? Because I think the villains. Oh, it's so scary, this book. Like, it really is. How'd you, like, the con- whole concept is crazy. Yeah, it just opens. How'd you feel about the opening? Like, I feel like going in blind to this medium and then just boom, now we are at a house where a murder is about to take place. How'd you like it? I loved it. It was not what I was expecting, but it was in a way better than what I was expecting. Yeah, that's I don't all- think I realized how. I don't know, not to sound cheesy, but like edgy comic books can get and yeah. like dark and just I didn't realize they get like that, you know. And yeah, two pages in, you're like, oh, okay. In the way that straight into a murder, yeah. Over. The way Joe Hill like would portray, or, or maybe to the to the uh, celebration of Gabriel Rodriguez, the artist, like the way that he conveyed all that, where oh hey. Uh, Mrs. Locke is a rental home. And then, you know, all you see, but the way it cuts it is he, behind his back, he has like a wrench or something or like a gun. I don't remember, but in the very opening and he looks at, and they're like, Oh yeah. And then it pans out to the trunk of the truck and it shows his uncle's oh, yeah. dead body. And it's like, Oh wait, what? Yeah. And that happens so quick. It was, that's like first two pages. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh man, this is scary. And it it's crazy how and because I've never read a comic book yeah. before it's crazy how from panel to panel it kind of reminded me of the way they shoot movies you know like oh, you yeah. got to get the different angles on the same scenes and the way they did that and the order they would do it, it was just that that was one of my favorite parts about reading it the transitions yeah and like uh, my favorite my favorite commentators will say like comics are the, st- are, the are the things that happen in between the panels you know what I mean because uh, and 
And even on top of that, I think the mood conveyed in the way that they are placing, you know, each panel and like how the angles are being like considered is brilliant and like exciting and and fun to participate in. I just think yeah. it shows the capacity for storytelling that like this team has and I I think this is an, an exceptional team too. Um Oh, another question for you. Okay, but like, wait, how how do you like breaking down? Because we don't need to go into every character, but breaking down like Sam Lesser and like whether you want to call her Dodge or Echo or whatever. How did you like them as the villains? I loved it. I mean, I loved everything about that book. I I thought Sam. I mean, besides Bodie, I yeah, I'm calling him Bode, but Bodie. You're chilling. Besides Bodie, I mean, he was probably my the most interesting character to read. Every time it cut when he was on the road with the trucker. I mean, that whole part is is sucks you right in yeah and even like you know with, with some of the trucker stuff it's like you make him the thing the thing too it, i think i guess with this story and maybe joe hill and maybe good horror in general is like there's different levels of like bad people you know because i don't think the trucker that picked up sam lesser uh who was pretty much doing pretty gross things with him yeah i don't think he was a very good character did he deserve to die the way he did Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I'm like, that's as egg graphic as I want to get into that. But, um, you know, because it's like, oh, he's not a good dude. He's cheating on his wife. He's trying to prostitute this kid out so he can have yeah. money. Acting like he's doing him a favor. Obviously, he's not doing him a favor. And right. then um, on top of that, he, uh, like, but then it's like he's not as bad as, uh, like, Sam. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like nobody's good right now, but there are levels, which I think is uh, uh, present in all good horror. And I think Sam nails that. Yeah. And and one of my act, one of my favorite parts of the whole book, too, yeah. I forgot to mention, was when Sam is on the bus and he notices the lady get up and oh. go to the driver. Yeah. And then it cuts to the next page and they're all just dead in the back of the bus. Yeah. And then, and then I think right there it cuts to another – Another part in the plot. Yeah, it's like but it's like then, they do page di- like differences. Yeah, but then there's a part where it cuts back and there's a fisherman out on his boat. Yeah, just kind of minding his own business, He's trying to get the thing to light. And you see the bus blow up in the background, but the first two panels, the bus hasn't exploded yet, and the mm-hmm. third one, it ex- the third, you flip the page and it's another panel, yeah. of the same thing, but the bus explodes, and right there it says the next chapter. Mm-hmm. And I love how they do they the intros into the next chapters no oh, that's funny because i didn't get that <laughs> like i read okay so i gave jacob my copy to read and then i read i read it digitally i gave jacob my copy to read and i read it digitally on comiXology unlimited i highly recommend that platform um but yeah i thought the way the way that was portrayed was very cool and like i really you know what's crazy too is what sam how menacing Sam is. And, you know, you thought he was scary in the first page. Then he gets all beat up in that one fight and he gets all scarred up. And I'm like, well, you're already terrifying. And Gabriel (laughs) Rodriguez is like facial portrayals of any character. It's like, you can kind of tell who's innocent and then who's not. And I'm like, he's more terrifying than ever now. (laughs) It was good. Yeah, it it did get, he got more terrifying as the book came through. Cause at the beginning when he first walks up to the door and he's, hi, Miss Locke, you know, I'm, I'm just visiting my uncle. Yeah, yeah. Et cetera. And I mean, he's clean right there. And there's, and, and I mean, even in the illustrations right there, you can tell the guy's a little off. You oh, know? They yeah. kind of make him look a little twisted. He's a weird looking fool. But, uh, but yeah, like you're saying, by the time he, but by, by, as the events go down in the book, yeah. he just, oh, he looks so scary by the end. Oh, and I think that's like something very cool about like this story is that like, and, and, and independent comics, I'm sure all my fans are tired of hearing me say, but like, I just think that it, it there, there can be stakes in books like this that can't happen in, like, your standard Batman, Superman. Like, as, um, I think that as scary as uh, Joker is, I don't think I, I'm more scared of Joker than I am of Sam Lesser. I think Sam Lesser is a scarier character because yeah. I think I don't know what he's going to do. I know that – I don't know if Joker's ever going to kill Batman, you know, maybe in 10 years or something. I don't think that will happen. But I don't know if that will ever happen. Sam Lesser, I don't know the lifespan of any of these characters. <laughs> I don't know – what he's capable of, he's terrifying. And, like, you know, we can go into the last kind of beat of the of the book, but, like, how how did you feel of, I thought, him opening up the story and, like, okay, terrorizing the family? How do you feel about him coming back and terrorizing the family? <laughs> like, Well, the, the scene when it cuts to, uh... Oh. Kinsley? Kinsey, yeah. Kinsey. 
because uh, right when he gets back, that's the first thing he does, right? Is he takes her out. Yeah, he's like, and she's like, hey, buddy, stop si- shining the flashlight in my face. And then he just knocks her out with the flashlight. Yeah. And right there, I was just like, oh. Because I thought she was dead, actually, when oh, it yeah. first happened. And then, he, and well, was he was like, beating oh, her. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then there's a scene like a, like a few minutes later in the reading where, t- where Tyler gets knocked off the roof. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he lands right next to Kinsey and mm-hmm. sees her, and he thinks she's dead, too. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of like, no, you know, yeah, like my like, sister. I and, can't. You know? And at, at that point, I was just like, well, this is really happening. Like, they, they had this guy came back. Yeah, and like, um, all he had to do is lock up. Uh, I forget the brother's name, but it's it's Mrs. Locke, and it's uh, Rendell's brother. I think it's Aaron. Oh, I forget his name. I forget it too. But um, yeah, no, I don't have it. But he. Uh, he locked them in the freaking wine cellar, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's scary. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you yeah. don't know what's going to happen, and, like, how, actually, how did you feel about Sam Lesser and, like, because uh, the whole reason he's motivated by that is, like, Dodge slash Echo is, I think it's Dodge, I think that's the character's name, but is motivating him and breaking right. him out. How do, how do you like the whole, like, mysticism? I think they, they leaned into the magic, like, really well that, in this story. That actually kind of was a, a twist for me, because I didn't really catch that at all mm-hmm. in in the first half like i just it didn't cross my mind at all that echo or dodge was behind it yeah and then because toward the end of the book they kind of throw that out there yeah and then it started making me think about the dad rendell yeah yeah rendell, it started making starts making you think about him and when he would go see the echo you know and then yeah that whole thing i there was that ending i kind of had to reread it because i was like wait what just yeah, and like, it is a twist for me. It is, and and the the coolest thing about the story is like th- this is the very first, uh, obviously book in the in the series. But they start leaning into the what the keys can do, and like you find out what other keys do, and it is crazy. Like, but it's also not so like, it's not Harry Potter. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's not so otherworldly with the magic and stuff. But it's like, and oh. I think that's what I was expecting more of, mm-hmm. and I realized it was gonna be there's gonna be murder in the book you know yeah 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 you're it's and like oh my gosh you find out that like kenzie not that i'm pretty sure this happens in this book but you find out kenzie's bracelet is one of the keys mm-hmm. and it's like at the, at the very end yeah she was wearing it the whole time yeah and i'm like oh my gosh like this is so freaking cool and like and you know you know you kind of find out rendell knew the whole time and it's oh my gosh i like I and like, he knew everything right? yeah yeah, I think I think so. From what I understood is, or at some point at least knew everything because did he forget about it all as an adult? Yeah, they, I think they were saying that the adults don't believe it as they get older. Like they don't believe what happened. And it's like I remember there was a part where it said that's kind of how it protected itself, like how the uh, just how the all. I mean, it's it's they made it pretty clear that none of the parents could even see Echo, right? Yeah. I don't know who can or can't. I, I think at one point it, it was just Bodhi that could see him, which I think kind of. To me, at least, I was just like, okay, then, yeah, adults cannot see any of this. Yeah, and, like, I love that. I love that, he, that it's Bodhi that is the first person to find <laughs> Echo because nobody's going to believe him. And then he's like, I find this really magical door, and I can become a ghost. And I'm like, ooh, that's scary. And then uh, you have Bodhi uh, trying to convince everyone else who's, like, mourning and just doesn't have any time for his, like, antics or shenanigans. And he's just like oh my gosh, it's, you guys aren't understanding and you don't want to participate. And then it, it, uh, I just thought that it was so good. Like that's yeah. a very well good, like arc for him. Yeah. That, he, he was definitely my favorite character. Those are my favorite, my favorite scenes when he was trying to get all the siblings to come and be a ghost with him and they were just writing them off. Yeah. They're like, buddy, you don't get it. Um, what did you, or did you have a favorite moment in the story? Like of the entire thing? Yeah. I'd say my favorite part was probably, uh, toward the end after, after Sam killed Tyler, after he strangled him. Yeah. And uh, Tyler's kind of just floating around hopelessly as a ghost. Yeah, and yeah. He, and he goes back to where his family is locked in that shed. And uh, he's just kind of panicking because he can't physically touch anything. He can't open the door for them. He can't do anything. He's just a ghost. And he's like, am I really dead? Yeah. And then there's one panel on here that's black and white. Yeah, and it's a flashback to when he was talking to Bodhi earlier in the book when Bodhi was running in the running running his ears about being a ghost. 
yeah. and going with him through the door. And he, back back when he was just kind of, you know, I don't want to play with you, Bodie. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. And he kind of realizes, like, whoa, like, he wasn't joking. I, I think I can go through that door right now and get back into my body. And he does it. Yeah. That Because that, 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 that was the first person to re- realize that Bodie was telling the truth the whole time. Yeah. I think, and then that kind of transitioned into the conclusion, too. And I think at that part, I was just like, oh, this is... This yeah, great. I thought the way they ended like Sam's kind of arc, or at least in this first volume, was really good using that door and using that key. And like the fact that like Dodge isn't Dodge is the overarching villain of the series. And so like the fact that Dodge is kind of like, I still need you and stuff. And I'm like, I like that they didn't quite like fully close the door on Sam. Yeah. You know, and so I I just love this story so much. And And honestly, there's a show on this series so like i highly recommend now going and check this out because i think that they casted really well but the actor they got the child actor they got to play Bodie is amazing really he is so cute and charming and i'm like that's all you know that's what that Bodie is oh yeah i, def- I definitely want to watch it now um i just never had any idea what lock and key was about yeah you know it's and you know it's funny too here's a fun fact for you joe hill is i think i told you this before but like joe hill is the son of stephen king Oh. Literally, his name's, like, Joe, like, Hillingson King. Oh, wow, okay. And so... I didn't know that. But he doesn't go by his dad's name. Maybe you told me that, but I forgot. Yeah, I don't know. That's why, that's why I plug for people, because they're like, oh, it can't be good. I'm like, yeah, well, like, check this out. And they're like, whoa. And they're like, I like Stephen King, but now I like Joe King, or Joe Hill. And I'm like, I like that he doesn't go by his dad's name anyways, too. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't have known at all. Yeah, no, and, and I think this guy, I told Jacob, like... I like I like Lock and Key, obviously. I love his other book though, Basketful of Heads. He just did seven issues and it was so good. He has his own like now this writer has his own imprint at DC Comics, just making horror books. It's called Hill House and it's really, really, really oh, good. Okay. Yeah, I would love to get into more of that. Yeah, and so Basketful of Heads is the first Hill House series I read, and I was like, oh, man, this is so good, because I'd read this and I liked it. So I'm like, let me make sure I'm getting whatever his next book is. So yeah, it's really good. Um, I guess I got a few more questions for you as we just kind of wrap up. Oh, wait, my favorite moment was, honestly, I just think the opening of this book was like was one of the best openings I've ever seen. Um, I like the Sam Lesser scenes a lot, a lot, because he's scary. Um, probably, and this is a kind of a cheater moment, but I really like the moments where they're flashing back to the first the first like couple pages when Sam first attacked, because I thought that like Sam, I thought that that thing was the like, damaging and they didn't like pull away from the family mourning. Yeah. And then it's like, it was, it was actually probably sp- most specifically when Kinsey is talking about it. I don't I remember who she's talking about it to, or maybe it's just her thoughts going. She's like, Oh yeah. I, I Oh, she throws up because she can't stand the, smell of wet paint because they were painting the house when Sam came by and oh, then yeah. um, she says I remember holding Bodie so tight that he got a bruise like on his neck or oh, something yeah. when they were on the roof behind the chimney yeah and then she talks about biting her lip and it it's starting to bleed so it bled. and I'm like it's just details like that I think are so well done like yeah. really kind of it, it it makes I guess their grieving not that it actually happened but it just makes it so much more just and real yeah, and real yeah and it grounds the characters and I just think story details like that that are so specific are you know it's it's some of the best stuff yeah and I mean even there were scenes too where t- uh, like Bodhi would walk in on Tyler and he was just standing behind Tyler and Tyler was just by himself kind of rambling about his dad or to his dad mm-hmm. and was just you know just going through it. Yeah. Like they 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 did a good job with that that grieving. Okay, so I guess I got two more questions for you. Er yeah, yeah, three more questions. Two of them are kind of the same. Um so then did this story change the way that you perceived like the medium of comics, meaning like the capacity for storytelling that a comic book can't convey? Did it change the, how you yes, thought of that? Definitely. That is always the goal. Because I I mean, I knew there were comics of all genres yeah. and all different I mean, there's a bunch of different kinds of comics, and but s- even knowing that, still for the most part, I think I would tell myself that it was kind of a superhero villain thing. Yeah. You know, or there's always some kind of like this one. I just I thought there was gonna be some kind of I thought it was gonna be more like fantasy. Yeah. 
and then it ended up being just a full on horror. Yeah. And yeah. like it was crazy. And I was just like, wow, okay, comics can get pretty wild. And yeah. I'm, and I'm intrigued to read more stuff by Joe Hill. Oh man, he's so freaking good. Um we got I got recommendations on recommendations for Joe Hill, but um yeah, no, I just think I'm glad. I'm glad you feel that way because I just think that the capacity. I it, it all it constantly surprises me the capacity for storytelling that this medium can convey. Um, I guess my my next question is, like I you may have already answered it. Would you pick up another comic? Definitely. Gladly. That's a good one. Okay. And then my last question for you is, what would you rate this story out of ten? I want to just give it a 10 because I loved it so much, but it's the first comic I've ever read, and that doesn't leave any room for other comics to yes, outdo it. Yes, it does. I think... I mean, are there I, some 11s out there? I, no, I just... Well, 100% in my opinion, but... Uh, but I think that there's room for more than 110, and that's why. And that's why I feel that way. But it's your, it's your, it's your rating scale. I'd say I'll give it a 9 because it was pretty much a 10, but... Who knows? I might like one of the other lock and key volumes more. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, well, that's great. We will gladly give you. Honestly, there's a, there's like an omnibus coming out, meaning like it's gonna be a big, like, it's a soft cover book, but it's like super thick. It's probably like 600 pages, and it's gonna be all, all of the lock and lock and key volumes. And I'm just gonna probably sell this copy and sell my other one and just go buy that Get so I can have them. them all. Yeah, because they're they're so good. And like the bummer part is that the show is already leaned into some of the other volumes, and so I'm like, I'll rush you the other one. But yeah, sh- so how much of the show exists? Like, how it's just it? one season. One season. One season. And what does that cover? It it goes it dips into all of them a little bit. Okay. Because it spoiled some stuff for me, but also I'm like I don't know if it's spoiled for me because I haven't read the other volumes. You know, I've read the first two of I think it's a six six volume series, and so that's about as much as I know right now. Um, but yeah, so I'll I'll pick them up and reread it or whatever once that comes out, or maybe it's already out and I just need to pick it up. Um, well, okay, Jacob, I'm so glad you came on the Cam Reads Comics podcast. We were so glad to have you. Um. We're, and you will be back to – I think you'll be a great guest for Basketful of Heads because I'm so excited to talk about that series. Yeah, and, it sounds great. Give it a reread. It's Joe Hill, right? It's Joe Hill, baby. And, I, oh, my gosh, the art in that series. I think it's Ramon Perez. Amazing. Um, so, Jacob, thank you so much for coming on the Cam Reads Comics podcast. Uh, everyone, go make sure to leave us a five-star rating interview on iTunes. Make sure to clobber that like and subscribe button on YouTube. And I got a super special bonus episode for you guys coming out tomorrow. My friend Jesse Watson and I are going to be talking about a mid-season review of WandaVision because if you saw episode five, you know why we need to talk about it. So stay tuned tomorrow. We will have new content coming your way. See you later.